Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And here is another episode of Skeletons in my Cupboard. Kindly advise our writer down in the comment section. And this is what the writer said. My boyfriend and I have been dating for eight years. We are both in our late thirties. When we first met, it was kind of like love at first sight. From the start of our relationship, we were very transparent about what we were looking for in the relationship and what our plans for the future were. One of the things we both wanted to do was to travel around the world before having kids and getting married. In that order, both of us did not want to get married before having kids. So needless to say, most of our plans aligned and that's why we worked. And we were the best bombers from the get-go. Even his friends hated that he would cancel boy time to be with me and my friends felt the same way. He's the kind of a guy who opens the door for you and texts or calls when I get to work to see if I arrived safe. Six months into our relationship, we decided to move in together so we can save money for traveling faster. By the second year of our relationship, we had saved more than enough for a cross-country travel for a whole month. Oh, it was so fun. I was living in my dreams and they were even better because I was doing the traveling with my BFF, who's also my boyfriend. By the end of the fourth year of our relationship, we had visited almost the whole of South Africa, parts of East and West Africa, some parts of Europe and Greece. Oh, Greece is by far the best international vacation we have done. There is just something exhilarating about having passionate sex in deep blue seas or in a villa with ocean views and the best food yet. The sex felt so good and so different. He would scream my name like his life depended on it and I was sure I'd fall pregnant since we were not even using protection, but I was on the pill. On the fifth year, we had done so much travel, have saved a lot of money to buy a house and we were both doing amazing at work. So Mina, I was ready to have a baby. I was ready to continue the adventures, but have kids and a family to either travel with or go home to after a vacation. I spoke to him about trying for a baby. We had the healthiest of relationships. We were already living like married people because we had a joint account for anything household and the apartment we were staying in. We bought it together. We adored each other. He was my world and I was his. And both our families knew about our relationship and supported, but both our moms wanted us to get married. The moment I mentioned having kids, he said he wanted to think about it because he thought would travel some more alone for another two to five years. But that was way too long for me and I was not prepared to be someone's girlfriend for 10 years. And that was not our initial agreement when we started. He even said that any man who stays with a woman for more than three years with financial stability but does not marry her definitely has no plans to marry her and that is not the kind of the guy he wants to be. I gave him time to think about what I said and three months later, he had not gotten back to me. So I asked him again and for the first time in our relationship, he lashed out at me, shouted saying, I'm putting him under pressure for something he's not ready for because I'm ready. I was shocked by his reaction because we have always been on the same page about everything, especially this, and we had decided we will have at least one baby and get married by the fifth year of our relationship. I never said anything again, but I was now starting to doubt if he even wants to marry me. But everyone kept saying I should give him time. On the sixth year, he started staying out late more often, had more business trips than usual, and he was not as chatty at home, didn't want to go out much with me anymore, and it just started feeling like he was happier on the streets than he was at home. 
I asked him that we fix whatever is broken, even go for couples therapy. And he said, there's no point because I've always been needy and clingy, but now he needs a space to spend more time with his friends. We would have occasional sex, but he started pulling out and he has never done that before. Ngave kezela because everyone, including our moms, said I should. By the way, we were both raised by single mom. His dad was there for him financially, but he had his own life, but not married. And I never met him because he hardly ever saw him as he lives in America and does not come home anymore. So I held on like the Mbokodo that I am, received sex when he wanted and spoke to him when he would come back home from work in the mood to talk. Until one day, one of my friends dragged me out of the house and told me we're going clubbing. We started going out more often, like how it was before I started dating. And he started being jealous and would stay home and ask me not to go because he wants to stay with me and catch up. But he would watch sports the whole time and not want to talk to me. On our eighth year anniversary, Decided to book a spontaneous vacation to Greece again. I just wanted to relieve what was the best sex I've ever heard. And in all honesty, I knew I would hook up with a Greek boy because I was sexually starved. And I knew for a fact that he was getting it somewhere. But I chose not to ask him anything. I got to Greece and the first day I serviced myself in the pool while imagining what we did the last time we were there. Oh, it was amazing, I must say. A day later, as I was chilling in the pool, this handsome dude who looked almost like my man waves at me from the other villa. But I thought it was just a coincidence that he resembled my man. He asked to come over and I agreed. We talked for a while. He sounded very American and didn't say anything when I told him I'm from SA. We parted ways, but the next morning at 3 a.m., I had a knock on my door, and there he was, standing there with a towel around his waist and said he couldn't sleep and needed company. I was so thirsty that while he was talking, all I could see was his seemingly huge D under the towel. We went to the pool, chilled, and then he said he saw me servicing myself, and a hot lady like me shouldn't have to do that. I jumped on him before he finished his sentence, and he is the greatest kisser ever, like ever. We had the most passionate sex you would swear we knew each other. He touched all the right places, went in harder at just the right time and place, would be slow in between. My God, who was this guy? How did he even know I like being touched like that? How did he know I like it there more? I asked myself as I went even crazier over his strokes. Guy was not just cute handsome well built with a big d he knew how to use it really well this was not even a dream of mine but it felt so good here i was having the best sex better than the one i had with my man and it was all with a stranger it was like god wanted me to forget about my boyfriend and the pain he's caused he wanted me to see that there is men with better strokes than him out there, and this dude was one of them. What made it more sexy was that I could see he was older than 50, but still looks like he's in his 40s. When we finished in the pool, we went inside my room and started all over again. Guy wanted to make sure I don't forget him, and I was not complaining at all. I was enjoying every moment. He was supposed to go back home the next day, but I asked him to change his flight because I simply wanted more of his D. And by this time, I was already thinking of leaving my boyfriend and finding someone new because it's at this time that I realized I deserved better despite what our mom said. He stayed three more days and during this time, Vesisha. 
we were turning both mine and his villa upside down as we enjoyed each other, even broke a few things, which he paid for. I left a day after he left, but we exchanged numbers. And he said he would buy me a ticket to come visit him in the States. Of course, I didn't believe him, but I was wrong because he called me about five days later. I arrived home and we started sexting and video calling after a week of talking. I told him I was staying with my boyfriend and he said he also had someone, but it was not serious. Fast forward two months later, he sent me money to buy a business class ticket and by this time, my boyfriend had started asking questions about why I'm always on my phone, why I changed my password, but he changed his first, why I go out more. I honestly couldn't care less about his feelings. He has played me for long enough and the worst part is that I found out he slept with a close high school friend of mine. He didn't like the fact that I was visiting America without him and suddenly he wanted to go with, but I refused and left him. But before I left, I told him I was tired of waiting for him and broke up with him. He begged me and gave me a thousand apologies, but I left him there and he did for the airport. Got to America and discovered that this man had money and he was willing to spend it on me. He took me to Hawaii, Los Angeles, and many other places. And as much as it's a criminal offense, we had the most amazing sex on the Hollywood sign, on the beaches, in one of the best hotels, on the pool at his house with views of Los Angeles. All I can say is we spent more time naked and inside each other than we did anything else. And this was last year. I was supposed to spend two weeks there, but I had a month visa and he asked that I stay longer. So I did, but we started talking more. And on the fourth week, my boyfriend called and told me my mom gave him my U.S. number and he was in the States and wanted to fix things. I refused to meet him, but my man wanted me to go see his main house. And as much as I was taken by the beauty of the house, my heart sank when I saw a photo of him and my ex-boyfriend, he could see I was not okay. He asked and I told him that was the guy I said I was staying with. With shock in his face, he said, that's my firstborn son. I died and I was already buried. Now it made sense why he resembled him. Before I could catch my breath, he told me his son was staying over cause he's in the country. I ran out of there so fast. I honestly did not want my boyfriend back, but I didn't want him to know I was being devoured by his dad. Took the next flight home, but my almost father-in-law followed me and told me he didn't want to stop. He can't stop thinking of me and wanted a few more days with me. So we continue and I avoided my boyfriend at all cost. Fast forward to now. He's still asking for forgiveness. I'm pregnant with his dad's child. We're planning on getting married, but I don't know if I should tell him or not. Even my mom does not know the person whose child I'm carrying is my almost father-in-law. Should I tell him or not? I will check the comments. And that's it for now. Do leave your comments down below. I love you.